All right, this is a bit of a weird one. A tulpa is like that imaginary friend you had when you were a kid, except it became real. And now before, before I get into whether these are actually a real experience that people have, or whether it's just like in your mind and not really real, the definition of a tulpa is like an imaginary friend that you sort of will into existence. So say if you were to like think about something happening all day long every day for a month, the idea with the tulpa is that if you did that, you would actually start to believe and actually see the imaginary friend or the imaginary thing and it would start to have its own thought patterns and its own free will. So let me backtrack a bit. When I first came across the idea of a tulpa, I thought it was insane. I didn't really know what to think about it. Um, you know, it was a very strange concept to me that you could actually, I thought it was just a horror film, like a, a short story or a fiction novel or something. But there are stories and reports of people who, who intend to create an imaginary friend in their mind called a tulpa and they believe it so strongly that eventually, you know, after a month, two months, six months, even a year of, of really believing that this imaginary friend or thing exists in your mind, they start to actually see or hear the tulpa interact with them in a way that they didn't expect it to. It's like it's its own entity, its own free will. It has its own thoughts and can make its own decisions um, to the point where it's like you're interacting with a different person even though it's actually in your mind technically and it's an imaginary friend it's a very strange concept to grasp there's actually an entire subreddit about tulpas and there are loads of stories on there about people who have really believed that they've imagined this thing this entity or this person into their lives and it sort of helps them it guides them in a way you know it can give them advice or it can help them uh, make better decisions and you know give them someone to talk to or someone to share ideas with and it's a very it's a very interesting idea, you know, I had no idea that this sort of thing existed or that, you know, people were doing this sort of thing. We all have those sort of imaginary friends when we're kids, start imagining that we're interacting with like film characters or, you know, characters from books or whatever it is as we're playing as kids. The idea of having a tulpa or an imaginary friend that's like literally a figment of your imagination but one that has its own free will and can decide on its own things and decide how to talk to you that's a very interesting concept and I have to say I've personally never experienced this, I've never tried this, um, I just thought it was a really interesting thing that I wanted to share with you guys because there's loads of stories online about this, uh, these tulpas and this sort of thing and it's just kind of, in my opinion it's a little bit creepy, you know it's a bit, it's a bit of a weird thing to do, especially as an adult who hopefully has developed its own sort of scepticism and criticism about certain things, it's weird that people would see something like this and you know want to get involved with it and want to try and experience it. The reason I'm talking about this is because it's very similar to dream characters. I don't know guys, this is why I first became interested in, in the idea of tulpas and you know I wanted to make this video and just talk about a bit more about them. It's because they're so similar to lucid dream characters. You know in a lucid dream when you have what's known as a lucid guide, a lucid dreaming guide, um, they are a character who is who is definitely a part of your imagination and of your dream. They are part of your brain, but it feels like they're part of your subconscious brain and they're guiding you to do certain things. And so what I really want to know, and maybe you guys can leave a comment is about this, you know, if you, if you know more than I do, I really want to know if a tulpa can be a part of your subconscious mind that you're practicing and learning how to interact with in waking life. This is what really fascinates me about this whole topic, guys. So in a lucid dream, you can interact with your subconscious mind through a dream character known as a lucid dreaming guide. That enables you to like directly talk to your subconscious and it's, the, the character sort of guides you through your own mind and helps you access areas of your mind that you wouldn't have otherwise have been able to access in a lucid dream. Now I've experienced that firsthand and that is incredible, but the idea of doing it in waking life when you're not dreaming with a tulpa is something that really interests me and you know I might go ahead and try this in in waking life I don't know I probably won't but I really want to hear your experiences with this and this is sort of like um, I'm sort of like reaching out to you guys because I really hope that one of one or two of you have a few stories about this that you could share um, or maybe I'll read that you know the top three or four comments in my next video but yeah the idea of if you can create a tulpa, as in an imaginary imaginary entity in your mind, interact with it in a way that it can guide you through your own subconscious mind while you're still awake, that, that will be huge. Because not only can you interact with your subconscious and sort of work your way through your own mind and ask it questions directly while you're awake, 
but because you're awake it's that much more vivid and you're that much more likely to remember the stuff. There have been so many profound lucid dreams I've had where I've woken up and I've forgotten key details. You know, my, my subconscious um, lucid dreaming guide might have told me something really important, but then as soon as I wake up, it starts to fade. You know, you know the feeling when you wake up, you've just had an amazing lucid dream or even just a normal dream. It starts to fade. You know, you start thinking about what you want for breakfast. You start thinking about your to-do list, what you've got to do that day, that week. Uh, you know, you look at your phone, you check your emails. And before you know it, the whole dream is gone, or at least the very important parts of it are just fading away into just like a fragment or a glimmer of a memory. And so yeah, that's why I'm really excited uh, to hear what you guys think about tulpas. Tulpas, they're, 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 an interesting, they're an interesting topic to say the least. It gets weirder though, because some people, and this is probably inspired by Creepypasta's uh, short story, I guess you could say, short audio clip about tulpas where he explains about what happens when you take it too far um, but there are people who report having a tulpa right an imaginary entity in your brain and developing it into a relationship with a tulpa like a friend but they also report that the longer they go on experiencing the tulpa or interacting with the tulpa as if it was something else it developed its own free will and some of them can get quite nasty they can get malicious or even malevolent and so is it's a very it's a very subjective interesting complicated topic to discuss really because like how do you know if that actually happens to people or if it's just what they expect to happen or you know maybe it's just their their interpretation of what's happening whereas if somebody else had the same experience they might not interpret it as a nasty way they might just think oh it's just my own thoughts it's all me whereas some people might think actually no it's not me i'm not in control of this this entity this tulpa and it's actually having its own free will and even guiding me to do things that are bad. Some people report that their tulpas actually guide them and in encourage them to do things that they would otherwise not have done. Yeah, that's kind of scary. That's kind of a difficult, a difficult boundary to cross in terms of mental health. It's hard to say where the experience of interacting with your subconscious mind, if that is possible while you're awake, while you're awake it's hard to say where that experience crosses over into actually a mental health problem where you're entertaining, you know, voices in your head. And that's why I really didn't want to, I didn't want to make like an instructional video on this or anything like that because I, personally, I've never done it. So I don't really know what I'm talking about. And also I don't want to encourage people to do this if there is a possibility of it being dangerous in that respect. But at the same time, I thought that this would be an interesting video to make. I, in a nutshell, I just want to hear your experiences with this in the comment section. That's what this mainly is about. I really want to hear what you guys have experienced with this. Yeah, I don't know, maybe I'll read out some of the top comments in the next video. Um, that's it for today, guys. Go and leave a like. Definitely leave a comment if you have experienced anything like this. I really am interested to hear what you think. And also just leave a comment letting me know what you think, even if you haven't done this, if you've never heard of this thing. What do you think the implications of this are? Like, is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. L leave a comment. Thanks for watching, guys. This video and this channel are supported by my Patreon followers. Please consider giving just a dollar a month to support this channel, or just click the links in the description. You'll find links to various Lucid Dreaming products, articles, techniques, and tutorials. If you did enjoy this video, please click the notification bell and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Why are you still watching this? You should have clicked one of my related videos by now, right? Or subscribed or gone onto my website or something like that.